Right, so we're back out on the bank again. We're fresh off the back of uh, the two-day White Springs Festival. <clears throat> uh, brilliant fishing. So we've come back onto the Pleasure Lake today. I just thought it would be worth running through the best tactic on this lake and by far the best way to catch the skimmers on the is feeding worms. Now worms can be a bit hit and miss in the winter. The weather's got to be right for it. We've had a lot of mild weather, a lot of rain and a lot of wind. <coughs> so it's perfect for fishing worms. So what I thought it'd be worth, what's this still fresh in my mind, come out, show you the ins and outs of how we sort of fed the worms and caught on it. It's not about feeding loads of bait, it's about feeding tiny little, like little marbles of worms with a little bit of stodgy ground bit to hold it together on one or two lines and then it's just a case of rotating your lines, maybe have three lines on the go and nicking literally a fish off each top and then up leaving it and just working your way around, picking them off just to keep that consistency catch rate up. We sat on peg 13, which was the informed peg. Well, it's just been the info, informed peg all winter, really. It's, it's won, I think, two qualifiers, and it won the lake twice in the festival. So there's a lot of skimmers in this area, so it'll be a perfect peg to show you how to approach this. Um, I've just got some. What's nice about this, you don't need a lot of bait. So I've literally got, well, whatever's left from the festival. There's not loads here. You know, a quarter of a kilo would be plenty because you're hardly feeding any. So I've got some worms medium-sized endrobinas there and I've got oh I've dropped one there don't want to lose one and what I've got just to bind them together I've just got some green supreme f1 dark I mix them 50 50 literally a pint of ground which would be more than enough rigs wise I haven't plumbed the peg a bit I think it's a bit shallower than where I was in the festival so I've got them those are the floats we've been using lately those Mick Wilkinson, I'm not even sure what they call F1 maggots, I think. So we'll have a little plumb round with one of them. Really simple, it'll be one rig, three lines, and just a case of rotating, and I can just show you how to how to do the little mix of worms, how to feed it, where to fish, and hopefully how to catch a few. So let's crack on, let's plumb up and see how we go from there. Right, so on the bait front, it's very, very simple. What I've got is I probably got in there a quarter of a pint of worms. But what I've done, I've got as much of the soil off of them as I can. So I want them quite clean, as clean as I can. I don't particularly want any soil or any muck on them. I'll chop them up fine, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. I've just got some, some for the hook there. And then I've got literally a pint of ground bait. That mix we looked at earlier on, nice dark, like a dark greenish mix. Goes really nice with the worms. Uh, quite a strong mix because we're not feeding loads of bait. I want quite a strong ground bait, you know, to get some attraction there. You know, if I was feeding a lot of bait, I'd probably feed more like crushed expander or something like that, but that's quite a strong mix because we're only going to be feeding in literally little marbles. So get yourself a tidy set of scissors. These ones, I did have a pair of Cresto ones, but I snapped the handle off. I'm trying to open a tin of sweet corn. So I've had to buy these. Get yourself some good scissors because loads of times I've tried to chop worms with scissors that aren't sharp enough, aren't good enough, and it just turns into a mess. So with these, they're so sharp, double blade, you know, you're just flying through worms there. You don't want to be like all day chopping. And if you get like bad scissors, blunt ones, they'll just block up all in the gap. You just can't chop anything. So and I've chopped these quite fine. So I'll just whiz through these and I'll show you what consistency we got. Okay, so I've chopped the worms and that's the kind of consistency you're looking for. You know, it's, it's pretty fine. There's an odd little bigger bit in there. You're always going to get an odd bigger bit. So it's going to be a case of Oh, knock the camera. Get yourself a separate bowl, and then I'll take out like a good dollop of worms, like a good palmful to start. Like I in a bowl, the corner of a bowl, and then I've got my over wetted ground bit. So what I'm going to do is just sprinkle enough. You're looking for probably like a 70% seven, worms, 30% ground bit. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of ground bit in there, and just, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to potch it under there. You can see already how wet that is. And, but that's how we want it. We want it like, you know, like a wet paste. So, like that there now is still a little bit too sloppy. I just want it just enough to hold up into like a little wet, stodgy ball to get to the bottom. So a little bit more ground bit. And what you'll find is, you'll mix it. It'll still be a bit, leave it a little bit on the wet side to start because it will like almost like set the ground bit will sort of take all our moisture on and sort of set into like a 
same as what you do when you mix paste really it's like really wet and then you come back to it and they sort of stodged up a bit so that's the probably the, that's the kind of consistency we're looking for so it's just going to be a little case of you know that's barely holding together but there is just enough ground bit to hold it like a little stodgy ball like that so i'm going to leave that set for a minute now and then i've got just a little drop of water on my side tray that i can just flick a little bit of water on add a bit of water as we go so that's pretty much it very simple don't need hardly no bait Get my old hand off nice to keep your hands clean because mud bath here so let's start plumbing up let's get some let's get a rig on plumb up and um itching to do some fishing because there's fish topping everywhere at the minute so let's get going so we've got a plummet on now we've got a rig on and this plug this peg plums up so nice it's just like a billiard table so i've got a line of 13 meters there which is just plumbed up to how we always plumb up just to the bottom of the body just like in the last video we start at that i can almost see where people have fished you in the past because the spots where you think right that's a nice far bank marker where you plumb up there the bottom's been dug out where fish have been in there so i've got that line there it's slightly to my right somebody's car alarm going off i've got a line right in front of me 30 meters perfect exactly the same depth and i've got another line slightly to my left which is exactly the same depth again so i've got three nice lines there I can feed a little blob of, on each to start and then I'm just literally rotating my lines, picking the fish off, tossing up as I go along. Really simple stuff. The rig I've settled on is a 0.4. One of uh, those Mick Wilkinson ones, 0.4. And like in the last video, what you'll find on this lake in particular is the fish are always up off the bottom. So what I've done, I've got the old reverse taper on on that one so it gives me the option of like flicking around my feed and fishing tight over a little bit bit of bait but what i've done this time what i learned from the festival is i've got a four inch hook length on this time i got some 010 supernatural there and an and, um 18 f1 maggot hook i really like those f1 maggots now but i've got a four inch hook length on there just because the when you feel, when they're like over this little bit of worm it feels like they're not picking it up and moving away with it so the bites are like really hard to see so I just feel like with having a shot that a little bit closer to the hook, it can sort of amplify those bites so I can strike into the right indications. Because last week, I was strike, I was like looking at my floor, I'm like, is that gone? I'm striking, I'm striking a lot of it, wrong indications. So just by having a shot a little bit closer to the hook, help you show those bites up. So I'll hook this up now, and then we can feed our peg and start doing a bit of fishing. There we go. On the left hand line now and things are just feels like it's just starting to happen now. I don't know what this is. Oh yeah. big skimmer for some reason they absolutely love worms on this lake but you can drop on the, on the match lake and not catch on worms i don't know why they love them so much but when you do catch them on worms on here they are these absolute clonkers they're lovely fish and that is you know your bread and butter in the festival that's what the you know your weight builders are so because I've had that bite so quick now over our little bit of feed, I'm not going to feed it again. I'm just going to quickly drop in and try and catch another one off that one feed before I top it up. So, still got that little... Where, where am I? There. Little worm head on. Because that bite was so quick, I just feel like there's a chance of another fish there. So let's just lay that in quickly now. Might not get one, but I just feel as if there's a chance of another one there now, just because that bite was so quick. It's a little blow with bubbles just popped up there as well. So 
couple of trees just starting to come together for us now, another little blow. So there's a few fish just gathered up on this left hand line. And oh, I shouldn't have struck at that. And to be honest, I'm quite surprised really because you normally associate like skimmers with sort of open water, but this line is the narrower bit of the lake. So I've got an island just in front of me, probably, I don't know, 20 meters away. So we're sort of fishing down the middle, if you like. There we are. There's another one there. When they get a taste for the worms, they absolutely love it. That's another good, you know, decent fish. Same piece of worm. Lovely fish. So that's probably two fish there now for three pounds. So, and it, I, I wouldn't like to think of. Or be fed there. Probably not even. Probably had three feeds with our little cup. So it just goes to show, like, when I say you don't need much bait, you literally need nothing. So what I'm going to do is because that bite was so quick again, I'm just going to push my luck and try for another. Before I have, you know, I don't want to top it up if there's still quite a few there. Yeah. Back in, leave the rig to the side. Just trying to do everything like tidy, give my be myself the best chance of catching one. Just drop it in. So I've just topped up my left hand line after those two quick fish. I'm just going to drop in on this down the middle line. This one really hasn't produced. Like we've got a few bites on the right hand line and a few bites on the left hand line. But this line, apart from that one fish, I think I foul hooked. There you are, saying that. Just dropped in and hooked it straight away. And that was a lift bite there. So I just got to show you with that, that little light rig, like that rig I hadn't really even trimmed up, it sort of just went down and just come straight back up to that bar, up off the bottom. So we're just trying to get a, a nice little run together now. And I haven't fed that line for a while, so just goes to show the like the pulling power of those worms and that little bit of strong ground bit. Another nice skin look. Lovely in me. So then hook him. Pop him back. I'm going to put a little blob back in on that line and I'm going to go and swing onto my other line. Again, just a little, little pea-sized worm head again. <coughs> a little bit of a uh, mix, a bit of a big piece there, so just get rid of that. Line, huh? Right, so we're back out on the left hand line. We've had a look after them two quick fish dropped in, never caught one. I've had a look on my right hand line, well, my sort of down the middle line. We had another one from there. So I've fed that now. I've just swung back onto my left hand line. But what I've done, I've just gone that half a section past my feed because I did notice an odd little pinhead bubble coming up past where we fed. So I'm just going to drop past the feed, see if there's a fish there. If not, I'll come back onto my feed 
if I don't catch one again, then I'll just give it another little top up and leave it alone for another five or ten minutes and try and take over off my other two lines. But after a good little flurry, it seems to, to have gone a bit quiet on all the lines now, just as I thought it was starting to get going. It's just eased off a little bit. Ah, yes. This big skimmer again. It's like you, you almost know when there's some skimmers in your peg. You just get those odd little couple of blows come up. And when you get a bite, it's almost instant. It's like you don't really need to be on each line for too long. They sort of give themselves away, and when there's one there, it's almost as soon as you lay it in, the floor trims up and you, and you get one. So there's another sign of a big old white spring skimmer, look. I'm not going to top up, I'm going to go straight back in again now, over that feed, try and nick another before I have to top up again. So, straight back in now again, over that little bit of bait. Another one, straight away. <laughs> and they always seem to be those big old stampers when you catch them on worms, I don't know why. Just does pick up those better fish. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put another little blob of our stuff in and I'm going to swing around onto my central line, see if we can nick one there as well and then just start bouncing off each other. Right, so we've just topped up our left hand line now with our little mix and I'm going to drop in on that line just in front of us. I won't give it too long because the way it's going at the minute you're catching a fish probably within 20 seconds of the rig being in there, you know, and that's at most. So it's, it's you know, it's similar to feeder fishing. Like when you time your bites, you you sort of see a pattern, and it's the same with pole fishing. So I, you know, I know I don't need to, to sit on a line for too long. I know if I'm going to catch one, I'm going to catch him quick. So let's see what happens. I haven't seen any blows come up on this line, so the dark line there, they're giving themselves away. Not so much here. Uh, not at them like fizzing and blowing like what I have over there. So, but when I have caught them here, again, it's been really quick. Lay the, lay the rig in, sit there for a second or two, get a little dink, and you're away. So, bit what? That's one that is a bite there now. Slightly smaller fish this time, I think. Keep these loops. A nice stomp fish in here. I think because I've got a roach on there, I'm gonna just gonna top that one up straight away. So we've got our little concoction there. And I might even give them a little bit more just to try and force the issue a little bit. 
so I've topped up with a slightly bigger blob on that line. back round onto this left arm line. One thing I've noticed today, and it was the same in the festival, is when I fed worms, I'm not really catching anything off the back of the feed like, you, like I do when I sort of feed more ground bit of maggots approach. They just seem to be right over that little bit of bait. I don't think I've had one fish past the feed today, and I don't think I did in the festival either. They just seem to be homing right in on it. But what you'll have to watch with that is, what was it I think? You just have to keep an eye. If you start missing a few bites or your float starts sitting a little bit funny, don't be afraid to put the plummet on and just have re plum up because you'll be surprised. Like you know, most commercials now have got really silty, soft bought lake beds. And this place is a prime example. So they'll dig like a little groove out in your peg and then you, you know you'll be fishing like half an inch or an inch off bottom so just bear in mind that if you're missing a few bites or you foul up an odd one just re plumb up <coughs> because you'll be surprised sometimes how much they've dug it out even in winter you think oh it's not that active but they're still like grubbing round there you are it's a nice bite Build a nice little weight now. And what I've done as well with my mix is I've changed it a little bit. I've probably gone now more 50 50 grown bit of worms. I felt like I might have just been a little bit too gung ho with the worms to start with. It was the way to do it on. In the festival, that was the way it was like plenty of worms, but it feels a lot colder today, so maybe that's got something to do with it. But I just did a new mix, I just used it all up, so I'm going to do another mix now more 50 50, more ground bait, but still, you know, still want those worms next. They do like eating the worms, but maybe I was just a touch too positive feeding like a 70 30 mix to start with, so I'm just going to go back 50 50 again. So uh, just I just seem to have had like a nice little run since I've just changed our mix up a little bit. So I still want it quite nice and wet. I'm gonna flick a nice bit of water in with it. And then you no, know, I don't know if you can see in there. It's not so rich with worms now. So let's carry on like this for a minute. I'm gonna top this line up now because I've had three quite quick on that line so again best hook bit has been that little worm head the size of a caster you know might even be a little bit smaller than a caster just a little pea sized piece and then have a little blob of stodge in a cup there, let that little ball plop out, and then we're back in on our central line again, we call it. Another 
picture from the middle line. <coughs> it's nice when you can get two lines just bouncing off of each other. Just keep topping them both up regular, keep a little bit of bait falling through the water. And you just draw more and more fish in all the time, the garden. So I just keep going as I am for now. There you are. Instant bite again, that time. Almost every every skimmer we've had today has been as literally as quick as that. That's just where this nice little like sort of tapered rig comes into play. You're not bombing it, bombing it past them, they're getting a the chance to have a look at it. And I watched a bit of nice difference today compared to last time. That shorter hook length, the points have been so much like more positive. You like, like last week I was having like a lot of these little slow pulls and you'd sit there and slowly go away, then you'd strike every one on. But today they're almost like little left one bites, they're just those sharp little jabs. You know what's gonna be a fish every time, so I'm really pleased with that. That little short hook length definitely done the trick for that. I'm just going to give them, um, shall I feed it again? Yeah, I will. I'll feed that again. Another little 50-50 oh, mix now. done as well like what we spoke about earlier on something didn't feel quite right on this left hand line like the float was like right down to it like could barely see it and it wasn't like that before and I missed like two little indications they were straight away like resting those lines that's what it's all about so like I was saying then I missed like two little indications, the float wasn't sitting right. So I replumbed it and they probably dug out three quarters of an inch. That's a good fish again. So that's my first drop in now. So I replumbed it up, moved, you know, set the float to how we should be. Left it a couple of minutes because I didn't want to go straight back in. You know, after there being a plummet in there, and that's the first drop in, put it in, little jab, clonk got a big two pounder in it. Yeah, what a nice big guy this time. Clock is very tight now. You know that. Straight in over that little top but Oops. Good ends as well when you get them from this. <coughs> Just changing our mixer like that 50 50 is definitely, definitely done the trick, I think. Nice fish, isn't he? That'd be a bit of a, you might have a bit of a hybrid in him, this one. Oh, where's he going? Where's he going, but come on. Look at this now. Thinks it's a car. Look at this. Yeah, definitely a bit of hybrid in him. <coughs> oh yeah. Beautiful. Lovely fish. Oh, there's some fish blowing on this line now. 
big old fizz just come up right by my float there. I've got a funny feeling that might be a carp. No, that clonk. Nope. Big skimmer bite. Proper rocking now. They're right on those coming to these top ups, they're straight on the top ups. We're gutsing down the worms. That's what those doing all our fizzing. Get in there. Go wrap around the bike. That doesn't matter. This is in the onion sack. That's a big body, that one. big old turkey plate we just had. I've just decided to top our lineup again and I'm gonna drop on our line that's in front of us. I've sort of given up on the right hand side now. I think these two lines are going so well I don't need to spread myself too thin so two lines is enough. Back on that same hook bait you know that's just a tiny tiny little piece of worm there. Let's just drop in on that front line. <coughs> Sure, there'd be a fish there. Right, I just feel like I want to feed a little bit more bait. I feel like I'm not maybe not giving them enough. I think that it's just gone so mental now the last sort of hours fishing, we're catching so many. I think like they want a bit more feed. So what I'm gonna do on that line that's in front of us, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them like a maybe a ping pong size ball rather than those little tiny blobs just see if I can you know up out catch it even more nothing to lose you know it's, these are the days to try it just because I caught in the festival feeding really negative doesn't mean that's the way all the time so I'm gonna feed now and I keep the left on line the same because it's so good there's fish blowing on it now so I'm gonna top up the line in front of me with a ball like that one of them S same 50 50 but just more bait and then i'm going to drop straight in on my left hand line don't need to feed that, there's fish blowing on it. So I'm gonna drop straight on in there, try and catch one or two, and then see if they'll come over that bit of positive feed. Give himself away again, that fish. There's a few little tiny pinhead bubbles up over the float, and then a nice little jab on the float. Oh, we've got another skimmer. That well, might be a hybrid again, actually. Is it another hybrid again? Yeah, it is. Uh... Nice fish, lovely fish they are. So I think I'll top that up. Because I felt quite positive on my other line. It's, that's still not enough time. I, like I feel like I need to leave it 10 minutes before I drop on it. So I'm going to try and squeak another fish out of this line. So I'll give him another little blob. Stodge. I, I think like 
well today he only was the same last week sort of two fish if you get two fish one after another that's almost your lot off the line that needs to be rested then for like three or four minutes maybe five minutes topped up rested and then when you go back they're waiting for you again See if you can just nick another, and if you can catch one or two off our positive line to finish. Well, not our positive line, but where we just fed a little bit more positive there now. I think we'll try and catch one or two there, and then wrap it up because we've caught a pile as it is. So let's just see what happens. There we go. There's one on our positive line, look. I think we're going to make this the last fish of the session now. We've had a brilliant few hours fishing. What's this going to be? A big skimmer again, look. Mental then for your water. Another nice fish to add to the collection. So let's just pop him back, I think, and then we'll have a little summary of what's been good, what hasn't been so good, and a little roundup, I think. Right, so that's the end of the session. Another brilliant session here at White Springs. Um, the aim was to catch them on worms, and after a bit of a slow start, I think it's been really mild of late. And this morning we had a bit of a frost and it was bloody freezing to start with and it took a while but finally we got some fish going we had the three lines going the left hand line here has been the best line by a long way and then the line in front of us that's been where we can just drop in nick and odd fish the left hand line apart from a few small fish hasn't really gone whether the bulk of the fish are just sat this way towards the main bit of the lake perhaps i don't know but on those rock hard days three lines can be brilliant when you're just fishing for a couple of fish but today i've sort of discarded that third line because the other two lines were so good and they were never really going to fade they were that good they were never going to fade so it was nice just, just to rotate those two lines um out of all that bait well the bait we prepared this morning i've probably got about we mixed a pint of ground bit up probably got about a quarter of a pint left there and that uh, like it was a good handful of worms we chopped to start there's half of them still left so it just goes to show we need literally no bait to catch them um, our little tiny hook bait was was the way just our little pea sized piece <clears throat> for every fish on that I'd not add another fish on it no like a normal sized piece not add a fish on that um, <clears throat> fed pretty much everything through that pot that I was a small guru I haven't got any smaller because I think the smaller part would have been just a touch too negative. So let's have a quick look at the rig again. I know we've looked through this rig again before, but let's just have another look. So we've got a six elastic for today, two ten back shots, one of those Mick Wilkinson floats we've talked about, and then I've got that reverse taper. What I've done, I definitely still want that reverse taper because as you've seen from the video, how many fish we've had when we've laid the rig in it's just sort of trimmed that clonk you've got went straight away and we've even had like lay the rig in it'll just go in settle and then it'll just rise up that's where a fish has been sat off the bottom come down picked it up and risen back up with it and lifted your bottom drop it up so like the strung out rig is definitely the way to catch them but i've just sort of condensed this down to the bottom sort of third of the rig this time rather than have it from halfway down so they're just tens just strung you know like you've seen before nothing complicated just getting further and further apart as you get closer to the hook and what we've done today is what i should have done in the match of the week is fished a four inch hook length because the bites have been so much nicer today like i was struggling to see them last time but today with our four inch hook length all the bites just sort of sit there quick little jab clonk you've got a big skimmer on brilliant so that was the rig um we started off with that 70 30 mix but 
you know, it, it changes all the time. That was that seemed to be the way to catch them last week, but today maybe it's because it's gone a little bit colder again. Like a 50-50 mix of, you know, 50-50 ground bit and worms was best. When we sort of changed to that, catch it sort of went through the roof then. So that's about everything. So the little cup was the way to do it. 50-50 mix of worms and ground bait. The strung out rig again has come up trumps for us. But this time with a four inch hook length has definitely made a big improvement on my catch rate from last time. Feeding with our little cup has definitely been the way, just a little blob here and there. We had a little go feeding, you know, a bigger ball. To be honest, I didn't really give it enough time, but we've dropped in over it last knockings and caught one. So <clears throat> perhaps early in the session, I could have done that on, on another line. But as it is, I'm pretty happy with how it's gone. We've caught an absolute shed full again. Um, I hope you can take a few bits out of that. Just be aware with worms. I would stay away from it when it's really cold and frosty. But when we have, the, like we're always having the last couple of winters, is these like storms coming in, mild, a lot of rain and wind, worms can definitely score then. So hope that helps a little bit. Like I said in the last video, if there's any other bits you want me to cover, put them in the comments below and I'll get out and try and do my best to get some good content for you out of that. Um, I think we're gonna try and film another live match the weekend weather depending and we'll catch up with you on another one.